How's it going, Teal Boys? It is the bowl season. Right now, we're slated to play against a 9-4 Georgia who will likely slaughter us. They're an A-plus team, probably 97-99 to 99 overall. It's not going to be easy. The stats favor them. Uh, Lee Corso favors them. I favor them. But we can still hope. We are the higher-ranked team. We have even records. Maybe we can come out with double-digit wins. Um, there's no recruiting for us to do this week, so we'll go ahead and start looking at ESPN. And right now, it shows number one Oklahoma against number two LSU. We will be changing that because we're going to be implementing a four-team playoff here in just a little bit. Uh, but I have uh, a rationale behind something I want to do, and hopefully you guys will agree with me a little bit. Let's go ahead and check out our conference standings. Can we see who won each conference? I guess if we go scores and schedules, and then if we go to uh, last week, we'll be able to see who won their conference championships. We went through this, but Boston College beat us in the ACC. Sad game, 59-56. Buffalo wins the MAC. North Texas wins the CUSA. LSU won the SEC, beating the Georgia team that we're playing, so... Uh, neither of us could win our conference. Boise State was able to beat Nevada in the MAC and the Pac-12 at Stanford beating UCLA and Michigan slaughtered Purdue in the Big Ten Championship. And as far as conferences that don't have a conference championship right now, Cincinnati won the American, Oklahoma won the Big 12, and they're maybe lucky not to have to play in a conference championship because it allows them to stay 11-1 and one and number one in the country. And Louisiana Lafayette wins the Sun Belt. So some interesting stuff there. We know that Reese won the Heisman. Uh, Austin Jones second. Sam Howell actually dropped to third, which is kind of interesting. Uh, Zach Charbonnet in fourth and Zonovan Knight there in fifth. We played a couple of these guys this season. I think we went one and one against the two uh, Heisman candidates that we played in Sam Howell and Zonovan Knight. And now we can take a look at All-Americans. I'm assuming Reese White is an All-American. So we've got that. Do we have any other first-teamers? Mason Shelton, middle linebacker. All NCAA, that's a pretty good first team. Reese would have been the returner if he wasn't the running back. So we don't actually get a returning uh, All-NCAA first-team player. Second team, do we have anybody? No. Kind of unsurprising. I expect to see some freshmen hoping i think we had some guys on the defense do pretty well yep there's kale Mackey. um we don't see finch make it but i think that uh he's going to step up pretty big next season how about the all acc uh reese at the running back do we have any others shelton at the middle linebacker digs at strong safety kind of interesting and uh how about this Two guys that torched us pretty well. Uh, Sam Howell at quarterback and freaking Pat Garwo. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This dude was absolutely rude. He averaged six yards a carry for almost 1,500 this season. That's just ridiculous. Second team, all ACC. We got to have a couple guys. Jordan Morris gets up there. Another senior on the team. But that's it. So not a whole lot of recognition for the uh, all-conference or all-NCAA teams. So now we can go ahead and take a look at some bowl games, but this is going to change a little bit. I'm going to just scroll through. If you see your team, you'll be able to pause or whatever to, to see their matchup and what their ranks were, because we're just going to try to get down to the bowls that are maybe a little bit more impressive, uh, but they won't stay for now. We'll, we'll switch a few of them around. Citrus Bowl. Ooh, kind of yikes. Michigan Stanford in the Rose Bowl. That should be a good matchup. We've got Texas Auburn in the Fiesta Bowl. North Carolina Washington in the Sugar Bowl. Uh, unranked Wisconsin and Oklahoma State in the Cotton Bowl. We should have been in the Cotton Bowl over Wisconsin. They're seven and five. Uh, that's interesting. We have the chance to change that. I don't think that we will this season. Uh, Boston College, Ohio State in the Orange Bowl, and so far in the national championship, it's Oklahoma LSU. But let's go ahead and change that. Now, if we look at the top twenty-five polls, there's one that's going to stand out, and I'm hoping you guys don't get mad at me for changing this. North Carolina is number three. They did not win their conference championship. They did not play in their conference championship. Uh, they lost to the two ranked teams that they have on their schedule. Meanwhile, Stanford down at number nine is 11-2, so one more win. They played it and won their conference championship. 
Their two losses were in overtime, one of them to a number 25 team, but they beat the current number 11 and the current number 5 team in the country. Um, I hope you guys don't hate me for this. I think that we are going to have Stanford jump ahead of North Carolina and play in the college football playoff. So we can go ahead and open up this utility tool. We will go to the college football playoffs and we will set up our 14 playoff. So if you don't know how to do this, I have a video. There should be a card in the top right that you can click on to go and watch that and figure out how to set this up for yourself. Uh, but we're just going to follow the steps and get this set up. So the file is loaded in, no problem. And as you can see, Oklahoma is the first seed playing against Michigan in the Orange Bowl. LSU playing North Carolina in the Cotton Bowl, except we're going to change that. We're going to give Stanford the nod. So now we will set the playoffs and we can move towards uh, editing bowl matchups. I don't think that there's going to be anything that we change. We could edit this Citrus Bowl matchup again, Wisconsin 7-5. and five. It doesn't fully make sense to be there, uh, but it's tempting to change them anyways. Uh, but I think that we'll keep it as is. So we'll go ahead and save the uh, playoff now. So now we can see, as I did move Stanford up into the number three spot, um, we could have bumped Michigan there. I guess it would have made a little bit more sense. It would have changed the matchups. But uh, this way, we just kind of replace North Carolina with Stanford. So LSU will play Stanford in the Cotton Bowl. And Michigan will play Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl for our playoff semifinal. And we will sim those games after, of course, we play our Peach Bowl against Georgia. All right, well, let's just get right into this. Our game against Georgia. We are the home team. Uh, yeah, look at that. 99 overall to our 83. They've got a 99 offense and 97 defense. I <laughs> just don't... If we hang with them, it's going to be off of some incredibly big plays. This is a big stage for the team. So we're just going to wear the standard home uniforms, get the brand recognition out there. Uh, we could make Georgia look pretty ugly. I think they have some some combinations that we can make them look terrible. But, um, I mean, we could give them the playoff away uniforms. They do have that, that special playoff ability. I kind of like the red pants. Let's do it. I understand it's not the playoffs, but for us, it's a big enough game. And we'll pretend that Georgia is super excited to be here. Nine and four, six and four in the SEC. Not the biggest season for them. Probably a letdown. Hopefully they're uh, not up to playing this game. Uh, hopefully they're not angry and ready to destroy us. A pretty solid offense. Honestly, not as good as you would expect having such a uh, high powered offense overall wise. But I guess they do play in a pretty tough conference defensively looking pretty solid we're what we are top players it won't really matter because this is our top players i think for next year um so not looking terrible there's honestly pretty similar but they have this year's seniors which will most likely destroy us they do have a left tackle b jones out for the game he was who knows how long he's been out broken tibia that one hopefully isn't career ending for him Oh, I'm dreading this game. It's not going to be easy. Let's get into it. Well, here we are. The Mercedes-Benz Stadium for the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Oh, are we ready for it? How well is it going to go for us? We do win the toss. We're going to elect to kick this ball off. I want to get the ball to start the third quarter. And we can go ahead and just get this one underway. This is one hell of an atmosphere in this game. A lot of Coastal fans making the trip, but it definitely feels like we're outnumbered by Georgia fans as the kick oh, has returned pretty far. Georgia starting with decent field position. The Bulldogs are coming out with trips left and four wide receivers to start this, but they run it. Charles Steele meets White in the backfield and Zamir White loses a yard. That's a great stop to start this game. Again, four wide receivers in formation for Georgia. They do step back to pass this time, and there's a man. Oh, Charles Steele with a massive hit forces the third and long. I just hope that the police don't come to arrest Charles for that murder in the middle of the game here. They're going to throw it. Yeah, I'm totally fine with that. Charles was there to get the stop, but it doesn't matter. It's fourth and five. They threw it short of the line. And, of course, that means that they're going to punt this one away. Georgia not feeling very risky right now. Fourth and five in their own territory. 
Gonna give us the ball. We'll see. Can our Heisman winning running back do anything on this return? Not really. We got decent field position to start with here. Can the offense actually move the ball against this team, though? All righty, let's open this one up with a run to Reese. Continue to keep it in the Heisman winner's hands as much as we can. Offensive line doesn't get a good push on the zone play, though, and we lose a yard. I'm not entirely sure what we should be doing here. We know this defense is going to be throttling us the whole game, so I'm just hoping that people are open. I'm going to scramble for a couple of yards, a yard. I think I could have made a pass there, but I'm just so scared of throwing an interception in this game. Unfortunately, that play puts us in a third and long here. Third and ten, we will have to go to the air. Hoping that somebody's open. A is open. It's Logan Malden. He's got the first down at just short of midfield. Drive will stay alive for now. All righty. On first down, we'll hand it off with the counter. Reese just getting north. Positive yards for him, I believe, on his second carry. And now on second and eight, we will try the read option. Seeing what we can do. Grayson's going to get the handoff, but the pressure gets there early. Grayson's still moving forward. He got five yards. That's a good carry for him. I hope this is the right play call, but we're going to go up the middle. Third and three. Give it to Reese and see if the line can get the right push or if Reese can power his way forward. Well, he's proving why he maybe deserved the award with that run. We're going to go with a cheesy little slants play on this first down. Try to get the pass off. Okay, Grayson missed his man. Uh, I don't like to see that. Thankfully, not picked off. Avoiding turnovers has to be our number one key to this game. So I'm a little bit scared, and I'm very scared on this play. Going to throw it away before we lose yards. Third and long. Grayson starting this game 1-3 through the air. So definitely not the best start to the game that we could have hoped for, but who knows, maybe we can pick something up here on this third down. We'll be looking for the running back. The out route was there. Oh my gosh, Logan Malden caught that. I thought for sure it was intercepted. Uh, okay, big first down. For sure, the defensive back there thought they had an interception. There's no way they didn't think they had one. Tried to jump the route. They were inches short. They allowed us to pick up a first down. That last play put us just uh, here at the edge of the red zone. So let's see. Can we turn this trip into points? Grayson, no juke on that play. Got a couple of yards. I was hoping for a lot more. There was a lot of space out to the left, but instead our quarterback took a shot. Well, let's go to the air again. Third and six play action. I don't feel any pressure yet. Here it comes running for our life and we take the sack. I was trying to throw it as we were getting hit, but Grayson just can't get rid of it. Oh, it's fourth and a mile and this drive has come to an end. The problem is it's a 50 yard field goal. Even though we're in a dome with no wind, I don't think we can hit a 50 yarder. So we're punting the ball away. It's tempting to go for this. But I'm hoping that we can win the field position battle and maybe yeah, force them to fair catch it at the 10. That was a really weird punt. Somehow it went straight. Uh, defense needs to keep doing a good job. We're going to blitz on this first down. As we expect the pressure. Shelton holds him up. Mackey can't do anything. Shelton had his tackle broken. How the hell did we give him 14 yards on that play? That was atrocious. What's the point of bringing such a big blitz if we can't get any pressure here? Okay. McCray kind of makes up for his miss on the last one with a, a tackle for a loss of six. That one looked broken for Georgia. So they gained 14, but now have lost six. It's second and 16. And we'll be expecting passes. It's going to be a play action over the middle. Pass complete, but it's third and nine. This is still a long ways to go. Let's see what we can do here. I'm expecting another pass, maybe a slip screen. Hoping that it's not a slip screen, it's not. And the coverage over the middle. Mackey slows him down, Diggs finishes the job. Wow, defensive struggle early in this first quarter today. I think that's going to end the first quarter. And uh, we'll start the second quarter getting the ball back. Georgia can be forced to punt it again. We should be up uh, at least three right now. Bad, bad third down for us down there in the red zone, but I think we can make it up here. Second time today that Reese will be back to field a punt. Hopefully we get a better return. It was only five yards last time. It looks like we're going to have a little bit more space this time. And we are starting with better field position for sure. Reese, the juke, not quite good enough. But he gets across midfield before he's taken down. 
And as much as possible, I want to keep the ball in his hands in this game. So we're going to continue to try to run and hope that the offensive line heats up like they have been in the past few games. Stepping back to pass on this one. Grayson, the pressure was coming. I felt it. Why was wide open? If we would have just been able to set our feet, we had Tyson Mobley easily. I was trying to wait for that block to get picked up so we could go to the edge. But our tackle just couldn't quite get to the man blitzing. So a uh, little bit problematic there. Third and seven will go to the air. And that's a tough throw. Mobley comes down with it. Got a little separation from his man. Picked up 12 yards. That's like his third catch of the day. No, it's his first. It's Malden that has two. Not going to lie to you guys. I get the two mixed up quite a bit. <laughs> Uh, sorry for them. Uh, you know, last names both start with an M. What am I supposed to do? Uh, okay, first down, let's run the counter. Reese has a solid amount of space up the middle. It closes quickly, and again, only a pickup of a couple. Six carries, only 12 yards so far. Georgia's defense is really good. They're just breaking down at inopportune times, so that's pretty thankful for us. Is there? Ooh, almost threw a pick looking for Malden. It's third and long again. What can we do here? Oh my gosh, it's been a struggle all game long. Just gonna try to throw the timing route. No! Grayson forgot what route he was throwing, apparently. Bedgood was on that little comeback, and Grayson threw basically just uh, a go. This time it's a 49-yard field goal. We're gonna try it. We got nothing to lose. I need to know what our kicker's range is. Could he possibly sneak it in? No, just short. So maybe a 47-yarder? Would have been good, a 45-yarder for sure. Oh, the defense needs to hold again here. I'm going to expect Georgia to stay consistent and try to put this ball on the ground on first down. They do. Um. Oh, my gosh. This guy doesn't want to be tackled. Zamir White just breaking everything that we throw at him. I'm going to bring even more pressure on second and one. Expecting it to go to him. No, they decide to throw. Reed gets beat, can't break the tackle, or can't get the tackle, it's broken. And this is what I'm fearing, George is on a roll here. If they realize how much pressure we're bringing, we'll start to be in a lot of trouble. This first down, they go back to pass again. Pressure kind of gets to the quarterback, but JT Daniels finds his man inside the red zone for another first down. So 6-6 six six to start this game for the Georgia quarterback. This one's going to be a handoff. Mackey's able to bring him down, I guess, for still a gain of two. That's kind of lucky for them. My hope here is that we can hold these guys to a field goal. They're going to go five wide. Running back came out. Oh, 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 I thought Jordan Morris had a chance for the pick. Instead, it's a completion, and it's third and three. Georgia running this hurry up a lot right now. Third and three over the middle. There's a man. Somebody's got to be open in the back of the end zone. Blaylock comes down with it. Oh my gosh. His fourth catch of the day. And it's good for a touchdown. JT Daniels, eight of eight. Georgia takes the lead. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to catch up uh, if our offense can't do anything. And we'll say though, the defense has been a nice little bit of a surprise today. Um, they're giving us a lot more opportunities than I would have expected. They're making it difficult for Georgia. Special teams looking really good, and Reese White, oh, 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 so close to taking that one to the house. Gets us good field position again. So the special teams and the defense have been good. It's just the offense that's struggling so far in this one. They're bringing pressure. Got to get rid of the ball. That's incomplete. We wouldn't have gained a whole lot anyways. Uh, somebody had to have been open with how much pressure they were bringing, but we couldn't find the man in time. Second and 10, let's try the read. Grayson getting some blocking. Okay, gets us right there at midfield with a third and two. We can do this. I am slightly worried about how much time is left on the clock as we're going to try to run this. Safety's come up to bring the pressure. Blocking isn't quite there. It's fourth and inches. We're definitely going to go for this. The offense has to find points at some point in this half. And this is a good a good drive to do it. Two and a half minutes left in the first half. We'll give it to JJ Art Barr, the fullback. He's got a lot of room to work with on the dive. And we cross the first down marker. Pick up a new set of downs. Something's got to start to give. Something. Somebody's got to be open. Maybe not. Grayson is going to have to do it with his legs. 11 yards on that scramble. 
We're definitely not going to have the speed to outrun these guys, so I think that we're going to have to beat them with superior route running. But nobody's open. I tried to throw the ball away, and Grayson just pump faked it, so we take a 13-yard sack. What the heck is that? Well, that's disastrous. Grayson just throw it out of bounds. Instead, it's second in a mile, and they're going to bring pressure. Who knows if we're even going to have time for the throw or if Grayson can even throw it accurately. What is he doing right now? The highest overall player on the team, and he's doing this in the biggest game of the season. I don't understand what his purpose is right now. Thankfully, finds Tyson Mobley, who had a great route there for a first down, but he's getting bailed out right now. Read option time. Let's see if his legs are working any better than his arm is. He will actually have to hand this one off to Reese, who has some decent blocking, gets seven yards. We're going to take our first time out of the half here. A minute and a half left in the second quarter and we will step back to pass here pressure came immediately outside the pocket Grayson is able to have a diving tackle miss he took an absolute shot but got us the first and goal in the in the process this first down box is pretty empty we're gonna try to run this up the middle only a few plays that we can run we don't have to worry about the clock necessarily from a first and goal so if we can get two yards of play we'll be okay Going under a minute now. We're going to try the counter on second and goal inside the five. The blocking is there for Reese. He got knocked forward, but just back to the line of scrimmage. I think that's a terrible spot from the refs. Um, Kind of worrisome here. Third and goal. Somehow we're five of eight on our third downs today, which is really good for this team. Question is, can we convert this one? We're going to let the clock burn down because there's only a couple plays that we can run at this point. We don't want to give Georgia too much time to you know maybe march down the field and score a field goal at the end of the half we've seen that plenty of times so let's let this burn down we'll snap it all the way down at one second and we'll see is anybody open a malden can't come down with it fourth and goal 10 seconds left we're gonna kick the field goal as much as i feel like a touchdown would be massive we do get the ball to start the third quarter so we could still take the lead there and we've had too many trips down the field not scoring to not come away with any on this one so seven to three eight seconds left basically we should expect to see one play out of georgia because the clock will run when they field this one we just gotta hope that we don't give up a whole lot uh decent field position four seconds gotta avoid the hail mary wouldn't be surprised if they hand this one off to white but no yeah it looks like they're going for the hail mary passes up it's deep enough and they came down with it. Thank goodness that the clock is all zeros. We can just go into the locker room. They get a little bit of stat padding yardage at the end of the half. They do have the lead 7-3 to three here in the Peach Bowl. But to come out and start the third quarter, the Chanticleers are going to have the ball. We're going to have a chance to drive down, score a touchdown, and take the lead. Maybe uh, the offense won't even have to see the field. As Reese is back to return. This is a very returnable kick. Just inside the goal line. Uh, blocking, holding pretty well. Reese jukes a man out. Once again, we've got great field position. The offense has been blessed in this game so far, and they've made nothing of it. I think every single drive that the offense has had has been starting with pretty good field position. I think the worst that they've had is from the 35-yard line. So we got to start to turn these drives into points, and plays like that to Tyson Mobley will help. Try to continue to get Reese going. George is doing a great job stopping him so far. Uh, we'll take four-yard carries, though. What is he up to? 27 yards on 11 carries. That's not very good. Second and six. We'll step back in the play action. And X was open. I was too late to see it, so we're going to throw this one away. Uh, I just, I'm so scared of throwing a pick that it's, it's preventing me from making potentially really big throws. It also doesn't help that I rolled out to the left and there was a lot of Bulldogs standing there. So gives us a third down to work with. And B is open. Bedgood comes down with it. Holds on through that little bit of contact. And he's forced out of bounds. But another first down for us. Another third down conversion. We're not moving the ball super well or very efficient. But we are still moving the ball in this game. We just got to find the end zone on one of these good four-yard pickup on that first down with the halfback dive. Let's go right back at him up the middle with another dive. This time to the O-gap. Blocking holds pretty well. We get another three. It's third and short. 
All right, we got him right where we want him. Time to run the play action. Make him think that the dive's coming. And then we pass for this? B, Fountain? Oh, I should not have thrown that one. Way too difficult of a throw. He's got a convoy down the field. There's the turnover I was worried about. Oh, why is it that every time we get the ball to start the second quarter, we have, or the, the second half, we have a really good drive. We go down the field, and then I throw a pick in the end zone. Hey, almost every single time. Well, if the defense doesn't get a stop on this drive, I think it might be game over. They will step back to pass here. No, it's a quarterback draw, and his blocking is phenomenal. We will never have a quarterback draw work that well. I'm selling out to stop this one. Second and two, engage eight, trying to bring the pressure. Diggs hits us. The quarterback as he releases, but he's got a man easily over the middle for 21 more yards. I think that was worth it. I think that's our first real pressure on JT Daniels this game, so we had to go for it. Here's the handoff that we wish would have been on the last play, and of course the blocking is absolutely incredible. Of course we have a tackle broken, and of course they get to have a 31-yard rushing play. It seems like there's nothing that we can do against these really, really good teams, especially when they're running the hurry up. The corner blitz does work that time as they didn't hand it off to the good running back and they lost a yard. Maybe they'll throw a pick uh, near the end zone as well. I don't really expect it, but it could happen. They step back to pass over the middle. There's a guy there. We've got him in another third and long. We've stopped him before on this. If we hold him to a field goal, that's best case scenario. JT Daniels, 11 of 11. And Georgia will come out in this hurry up. What can we do to stop him? Third and nine. Stepping back to pass. Going for the corner of the end zone. Oh my gosh. Charles Steele got burned on that corner out. JT Daniels still perfect passing. Literally can't miss. And Georgia takes a two score lead. Oh, the worst part about them scoring is that now our offense has to come back out on the field. It has not been... A lot of fun using the offense today because they are struggling. Special teams didn't do quite as well as they have been the rest of this game either. So we can't throw deep. We can't throw short. We can't run the ball. How the hell do we find the end zone? Hopefully we figure it out on this drive. We'll try to run on first down. That worked okay. Uh, but I'm just kind of worried that we're not going to have enough time to make a comeback here. Held to a field goal at this point. What can we find as we go play action second and five? Well, we can find that B is kind of open. Yeah, the safety was there. He was never really open. We'll hit as we're throwing. It's another third down for us to try to convert. Their coverage is just far too good for the talent that we're using. So we need some luck and maybe a lot of cheesy like out routes and slants and all that jazz. We'll take it that time. First and 10. Let's go with the dive here. Reese, positive yards, we'll take it. Let's start going in the hurry up. We've got to find something that works, so this is going to have to do. A is wide open, never mind. Again, dude, they're, even their defensive line is just so quick. We have no time. Nobody gets open deep, and if they do, I'm not going to have time to get set and make the throw, so I don't know. It's going to take a, a big, big miracle and plays like that where we can break some tackles. Oh my gosh, that's a rarity for our offense. Good 15-yard pickup that time from Logan Malden. Let's keep passing. They're not really guarding Malden. Ignoring our tight ends at this point, trying to bring the pressure. That didn't work for him. And we'll run the counter on this one. Starting to really run out of time in this third quarter, and we lost a yard on that play. Supposedly, McCall is on fire. I'm not sure if that's actually the case, but Logan should be on fire because he's really carrying the offense right now on this drive. Let's continue to pass. Third and three again outside the pocket. And there's DJ Johnson unable to hold on to that one. That was a, a tough throw. Good little play from the DB. Unfortunately, that means it's fourth and three. We have to go for this. A field goal is not going to be enough for us. So... How do we go about uh, converting this? They're bringing pressure. We've got Malden. You better believe we're going to go to him. Logan gets the first down, another five yards. Allows us to keep this drive alive as we're nearing the 10-yard line. And let's hope that somebody's open. Reese White is open inside the five. He took a big shot, but it's second and two inside the five, I think, at the three. And we'll try to get another playoff here before the end of the third quarter. Oh, my gosh. We just got mauled in the backfield. So much for that last 
gain because we just lost four yards. At the end of the third quarter, we're down way too much. 11 points uh, is a lot for a team that has only scored three points through the first three quarters. So headed into the fourth, we got our work cut out for us. Got to avoid turnovers. Got to find the end zone. The defense has got to make a stop. Well, Reese is cold. Bedgood's cold, but Grayson's on fire. What can we do with that? Well, we can find Reese White, and he can... Oh, maybe start to warm himself up. Falling forward into the end zone to start the fourth quarter. We finally get a touchdown on the board. Oh, it's going to be a four-point game. Do we have enough time? Well, I think we got to go for two here. Try to make it a field goal game as I'm going to get outside the pocket. A is kind of open. It's Malden. And he's in. Oh, just barely. Oh, my gosh. Logan Malden has saved our bacon time and time again in this game. How about that? Just falling backwards to make sure that the ball crosses the goal line. And with that, it's a three-point game with 5.56 to go here in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Can the defense get a stop? Special teams gave us a little bit to work with. Still a good return for Georgia. And I'm curious to see how this drive goes. We are going to bring a little bit of a blitz on first down, but they're going to step back to pass. And over the top of Mackey, they find Dominic Blaylock again for 14 yards. We're getting eaten alive through the air. JT Daniels now 13 to 13, but well, City McRae missed the tackle. Thankfully, we're able to clean it up there, and JT loses two yards, second and 12 here. Unfortunately for us, that means that uh, Georgia's going to be passing the ball. They haven't had an incompletion yet. I don't even really know if they've had to scramble yet. And there is Morton. Oh, 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 Jordan Morris had the interception, but he was out of bounds. So big, big third and 12 for us as they will look to pass. And what? He caught that through the contact. Kyrus Jackson just held on. It was an absolute circus catch as Jordan Morris came up to try to get the stop and uh, he held on through the contact. Uh, thankfully, Zemir White steps out of bounds after a four-yard pickup there. Now we just need to continue to slow these guys down. A little bit of pressure, not there. Zemir open, still breaking tackles. That's a block in the back. They're never going to call it and he picks up the first down. Shelton got screwed on that one. He would have had the tackle for sure. So they're just getting closer and closer to the end zone, burning more and more time off the clock. Oh my gosh, how big though the sack comes. Shelton said, screw you refs. If you're not going to call the block in the back, I'm just going to get the sack and now it's second and 17. The big problem with this play is that uh, we haven't done great in these long yardage situations. They, you know, they usually get eight yards on the second down and then get the first down after that. This is an option to the edge though, why? Are they running the option again? It's third and 18. A great chance for the defense to get off the field. I have no idea what they're thinking going with that one. I wouldn't be surprised if they did something stupid here. No. Looking, looking, looking. Reed. Well, it doesn't matter if he gets to the man. Blaylock catches it, but it's fourth and four. So we're going to hold Georgia to a field goal attempt here with three minutes and 50 seconds left in the game, which means our offense will get the ball down six. A chance to take the lead with a touchdown and an extra point. That is massive. A great return from Reese would be a fantastic catalyst to start this one off. Looks to be in a decent fieldable spot. If the blocking holds up, it kind of does. And yeah, Reese gets us across the 35, I think down to the 38 to start this drive. So plenty of time to work with. We don't have to worry about our timeouts. We just have to make sure that we find the end zone. And that's going to help tremendously. Nine yards on first down puts us almost at midfield. Offensive line, I think, maybe starting to heat up. They typically do well near the end of the game. And yeah, they're getting a good push. Another six yards for Reese. He's just broken the 50-yard mark on the game. That is not great stats-wise from our Heisman winning running back. Pressure coming as we go. Play action. Maybe over the middle. Dion Fountain comes down with it. We're just across the 25-yard line. That was a scary throw, but I got to trust a guy like Dion to come down with that one. I got to be actually a little bit worried here that we don't uh, leave too much time on the clock for Georgia. We know that they have a potent offense when they get going. Oh, blocking doesn't hold up. Grayson loses two yards. I guess most importantly, we just need to find the end zone. It's important to think about the clock and what it could 
you know, how much time we're leaving on it. But if we don't score, then it doesn't matter to begin with. Over the middle, Dion Fountain comes down with that one. That's a first down across the 15. Great route running from him right now in the clutch. This run will take us below two minutes. It's on first down. We go with the dive. and We get three yards on the play. And we'll continue to run here on this second and seven. Looking for the counter. Blocking is not really there. We got a yard, but it's third and six. And we have to get a touchdown here. Maybe it would be wise for me to be in the hurry up. But again, I'm confident that we're going to convert this. We'll see what we can do. Malden. Could we find him in the end zone? He can't quite get off of his block, and it's a tough throw. Oh, could have come down with it if it was accurate. Instead, it's fourth and six, and we have to go for this. Could this be the one? Game on the line. Fourth and six for the Peach Bowl. We're looking to the air. Reese is open. He's got the catch, and he's got the first and goal with a minute and 15. Well, I think we're going to burn the clock here and try to, you know, get this one done with just a little bit of time left. There's no point in using our timeouts. I don't think there's a point in us keeping clock right now because we'll just allow Georgia to have time to get a drive in. So instead, we'll burn the clock and oh no. Did they let Reese score there? We will tie the game up with an extra point giving us the lead. But this is potentially disastrous. They're gonna have 47 seconds to get into field goal range on this one. Oh no, we didn't burn enough time off the clock incredibly dangerous everything now rests on the defense and i guess the special teams is they're going to be burning the clock here oh no what a great return 28 yards out and i imagine they have a good kicker well we're gonna come out in the nickel we know that they're gonna be passing so we might as well first and 10 they'll step back looking to throw there's got to be a guy open the comeback route to pickens they're already across midfield with 38 seconds <laughs> oh no well, I'm scared. Uh, I don't know how this is going to go for us. Trying to bring Mackey on the blitz. No pressure. They find Blaylock again there across the 40. Mm, this is bad. Best case scenario for us is an interception or maybe they score a touchdown because I think we're going to lose a heartbreaker here. JT Daniels literally all the time in the world to throw. He's going to throw it up. He's got a man inside the 10. He breaks the tackle and he scores with 22 seconds left in the game. Oh, no. Come on. JT Daniels has had one hell of a game throwing the ball. Oh, breaks Aaron Murray's record for school passing touchdowns in the season. That's not good news. Well, this is rough. George is going for two. Trying to get it. We're bringing a lot of pressure, but Samir had the biggest gap in the world. We rushed eight guys there. No pressure for him. This is this is rough. So with that two-point conversion, it makes it a seven-point game. As we will need everything to go right for us. Risa is going to return this. The blocking isn't there. Oh my god, that was the worst decision ever. Special teams just really let us down. Four seconds burned off the clock just for us to get the ball at the 15-yard line. That is not going to get it done. Maybe somebody will burn there, man. I'm throwing this one up for Dion Fountain. Can he come down with it? Oh, he had it in his hands, and he dropped it at midfield. Well, let's hope for something miraculous. Not a whole lot of time left. Circles open. It's Aaron Bedgood. He dropped it. What are you doing? Two drops in a row. We've had conservative catching on this whole time as well, and they just keep dropping the ball. So with seven seconds to go, we have maybe two passes available to us. I'm sure this is going to be dropped by Dion. No, he breaks a tackle and he's breaking free, but he's not going to have time to get to the end zone. If they would have just caught one of the other two plays, we're just fine. The game ends with us looking to score we lose by a touchdown i am so freaking pissed at those two guys for dropping passes that were in their hands oh my goodness that is so so disastrous what a terrible way to end the season oh we might have to cut some players of the off season <laughs> that is disappointing oh my gosh i thought for sure we would have had it there's three terrible things that happened in a row to us with 22 seconds left, we fielded the, the kickoff, and the special teams absolutely let us down, so we were at the 15-yard line. 
If we just let that go for a touchback, we get 10 yards further downfield and we save four seconds. The next play, we throw up a bomb. We have a man get his hands on it. He drops the ball. That would have put us at midfield. That's a waste of a bunch of seconds. The next play, we throw one up. We have a man go up for it, catch it, hold on to it for a second, and then drop the ball. That would have put us at midfield. And finally, when they do hold on to one, there's not enough time left. I had thought about diving down or getting out of bounds, but by the time that throw had crossed my mind, I was looking at the time left, and it showed one second, so there just wasn't enough time to, to get that done. So we end in a disappointing fashion. We, I mean, neither team ran the ball. We both passed a ton. The one turnover ends up being the difference, as it always is in our games. It's a heartbreaking loss. If Dion Fountain was just a little bit more quick, that game could have been over. Uh, Reese White is our offensive player of the game. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because he scored two of our only touchdowns, but 60 yards on 22 yards carrying the ball is pretty abysmal. Um, Shelton did okay. I guess he got a sack. How about JT Daniels? 19 of 20 for 298 yards and three touchdowns just burned us so that's a shame Ringo with the interception in the end zone oh I'm ready to move on to the next season but first we've got to go through the rest of our playoffs so let's go ahead head to our scores and schedules and we can sim the semi-final matchups and see who's going to play in the national championship we've got Michigan and Oklahoma 1v4 in the Orange Bowl let's sim this one and it's Michigan barely winning it 23 to 21. So that's pretty dang close. How about Stanford and LSU? The other one, the Cotton Bowl, will sim this one as well. And well, sorry, North Carolina, but it seems like Stanford deserved their spot. 28 to 19, the Cardinal move on to face Michigan in the national championship. That's a big game. So let's go back to the uh, playoff editor. And we can see now Michigan Stanford in Phoenix at State Farm Stadium. I'm really tempted to send this game to the Rose Bowl. It's a classic Pac-12 versus Big Ten matchup. But we'll keep it the way that it was. Keep it in Phoenix. And we'll go ahead and save this. And then we can head back and sim to see who our national champion is on this season. So let's scroll down to the end of this one. Michigan at Stanford. We can see that it worked in the college football playoff championship. Three versus four. So a real underdog story on this one. Let's go ahead and sim the game. And who won it? Stanford. So the Pac-12 wins the national championship. Stanford wins that game 28 to 19. And the Cardinal. You know, we we brought them in as an outside team to replace North Carolina, and they show us why it was deserved. They get the national championship win. And then we headed back to Palo Alto. Pretty happy about that one. So let's go back to the editor and finalize this. Again, we'll go into the 14 playoff, and this time we'll do step three. We'll open the file again. We'll let it load. And we can see now it does recognize Stanford is our... Uh, college football playoff champions really coming in making their mark and so we'll go ahead and save that and as we load in we can go down and see uh, all of our games are set as they should be Stanford LSU playing Michigan Oklahoma playing and then Stanford well it shows Michigan winning this game uh, that's backwards the scores are definitely wrong there um but they're right on the result of the game. I think it should be fine. We'll go ahead and advance to the end of the bowl season. And uh, we'll see what the results of the rest of the bowls were. Reese ends up setting a school season rushing touchdown record at 32. So good news for him there. Surprised that that's it. And how disappointing uh, was that end to our season? We lose the conference championship in a heartbreaker, and then we lose our bowl game in a heartbreaker. Nine and five, couldn't get double digits on the win. And we can see that it works. Top stories, ch ch, -ch champs Interesting. Uh, <laughs> that's that's uh, a great headline. Stanford does end up with the win. We'll see if it was correct, because it was looking a little bit weird earlier. Yeah, so it recognizes that Stanford won. It's just that this bowl result thing is a little bit wonky. Um, we can even see that 
if we look at the scoring summary, um, Stanford is the team with more points. So that's weird, but the game recognizes it. That's what matters. Um, man, big, big, big games. I, I love the fact that this uh, works for us. Now, let me see. Let's scroll through the list of the rest of the bowl results. Again, if you are looking for your team, you might have to just pay a, a lot of attention and pause it when we get to it because we're just going to focus on some of the bigger matchups, but we will scroll through all of them anyways. Oregon beats Clemson in a pretty interesting Holiday Bowl matchup. Probably a pretty disappointing season for both of those teams, although the Ducks do end the season top 10. Kansas beats Georgia Tech in the Cheez-It Bowl. Uh, Bama played Texas Tech in the Texas Bowl. Uh, Bama wins that one. Good for them. Notre Dame slaughtered Temple in the Armed Forces Bowl. We've got uh, USC slaughtering TCU in the Alamo Bowl. And the Peach Bowl, unfortunately, we had a sad, sad loss. Ooh, a close one. Purdue just barely edges out Florida in the Outback Bowl. I'm curious if that means that the world got uh, that free Bloomin' Onion or not, because that's obviously the better team to support. <laughs> in the Citrus Bowl, we were questioning taking Wisconsin out against Boston College. They end up slaughtering them 31-14, to so glad that we didn't, uh, you know, deprive the Badgers of that opportunity. In the Rose Bowl, Ohio State beats Oklahoma. A little bit weird on the matchup just because of the playoff, but uh, they get that one done for, you know, the battle between the OSUs. Texas beats Auburn in the Fiesta Bowl. North Carolina beats Washington in the Sugar Bowl, so we did take them out of their, you know, uh, playoff spot, but they were able to win a New Year's Six, and they actually end the season as the number two team in the country. Uh, we already know a couple of those games. So, yeah, that's that's our bowl games. Pretty interesting season. Let's go ahead and see what this top 25 poll looks like to end the year. The coaches poll is the one that we care about. I can't imagine that we're still ranked, but Stanford, North Carolina, Texas, LSU, Oklahoma is our top five with Ohio State, Michigan, USF, surprisingly, uh, and then Oregon and Washington rounding out the top 10. Kind of an interesting looking top 25. Auburn and Alabama at 14 and 15. Not great seasons as both teams go 9 and 4 on the year. Uh, Kansas actually ends the season top 20. Hawaii makes their way up a little bit. The Georgia team that beats us moves up from 26th to 21st. And I imagine that we dropped down. Oh my gosh, all the way out of the rankings. No respect after a close loss to an outranked team. I guess we did end the season 9 and 4, but... A little bit disappointing. My bad. We ended at nine and five. Regardless, it doesn't matter. Uh, we will be advancing to the off season, but that's gonna have to wait till the next episode. Before I say goodbye for this episode, though, I do want to remind everybody that in the off season, you will have the ability to rename a player if you're a two or, two or higher member on the channel. So if that's something that you're interested, you'll need to join pretty quick, as I will be getting that episode done. Um, members will see a post. Members will see a community post with our final like recruiting results and who we have. So maybe a little bit of a spoiler or a sneak peek, depending on how you want to look at it. But if any of these players interest you and maybe you want to change their name, uh, who knows? Maybe we pick up Michael May and you want to change his name so that he reflects yours. Go ahead and get right on that because I want to record that episode soon. So yeah, if you are a member, be looking for the community post on YouTube. Uh, it'll be first come, first serve as always. So uh, if you want a guy and you have him in mind, make sure that you're ready to to, uh, to comment on that post. Make sure that you have a backup as well. Again, I'll be posting a picture of our final recruiting results uh, with overalls and everything positions. So yeah, if that's something that you're interested, uh, I just wanted to put out a little reminder. But all of that and the rest of the offseason will have to wait until next episode. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. It means the world to me. And if you're not already subscribed, please feel free to do that so that you can get notified when these new videos come out. And while you're down there subscribing, you can head to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, as well as our community Discord and a link to become a member. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.